Welcome to the W.D. Jordan Rare Books and Special Collections Library, located inside Douglas Library at Queen's University. Today we are going to look at the library's copy of De Humani Caporis Fabrica, or On the Fabric of the Human Body, by Andreas Vesalius. This copy was donated to the Medical Library at Queen's University in 1912 by Mr. C. Birmingham. Vesalius published De Fabrica when he was just 28 years old. Born into a family of physicians, he studied medicine at the University of Paris, but was forced to leave before completing his degree when the Holy Roman Empire declared war on France. He then studied at the University of Louvain, moving on to Padua to study for his doctorate. Published in 1555, the second edition folio the first being printed in 1543, is probably the finest edition of the Fabrica, as it is known. Queen's also has a copy of the first edition, published in 1543, although it is an incomplete copy, lacking the title page. The 1555 edition was printed in Basel by Johann Apornus and is divided into seven books, incorporating text with illustrations. It is known for its title page, where Vesalius is the instructor and dissector, as well as the three skeletons and the 14 muscle men. It includes more than 220 anatomical woodcuts in the text, including 17 full page and more than 200 woodcut initials. The second edition was prepared on an even grander scale than the first, using heavier paper, larger type with 49 instead of 57 lines to a page. The title page was also recut and is less impressive in this edition. The Fabrica is known as the first modern anatomy textbook following Galen, a medical researcher writing in the second century. Vesalius critically dissects not only human cadavers, but also the work of Galen. Galen had been the standard authority on anatomy for 1,200 years. For religious reasons, he had been restricted to dissecting animals, and Vesalius does include animal dissections as well in his book, although, as the physician to the gladiators, Galen certainly would have seen many wounds and injuries that would have informed his knowledge. The famous title page is incredibly detailed, from the top with Vesalius's three weasels coat of arms to below where Vesalius himself is performing a dissection on a female cadaver. Surrounding Vesalius are three ancients, Galen, Aristotle, and Hippocrates, who are all looking on approvingly of his work. Here, the animals that were at the center of Galen's work are now off to the side. The series of muscle men are arranged sequentially to demonstrate a progressive dissection. The figures represent an idealized human form and may be divided into two categories. Those in which the figures are dead and supported by pulleys and ropes, and two, those in which the figures appear to be alive, flexing their muscles and moving. The rural backgrounds form a continuous panorama of the Euganian hills along the river route from Padua to Venice. This use of landscape gives the images a sense of reality and perspective. Vesalius probably employed several artists and block cutters, and there is some disagreement among scholars as to who the artists were. Until recently, it was thought that Kalker was the artist, as he had provided illustrations for earlier works by Vesalius. Modern scholars, however, generally attribute the work to the school of Titian. The pictorial initial letters are also remarkable. There is a harmonious balance between the form of the letter and the background scene, which depict the anatomist and his assistants. The initials are larger than those found in the first edition, with different drawings. Here in the letter O, a puto surrounded by other puti is setting a skull into a cauldron. Vesalius is one of our most um, requested items, and so one of the ways that we manage 
the physical condition of the item so that we can make it available to uh, current and future generations is by um, first managing um, any physical risks in uh, the reading room when we're viewing the objects. We want to make sure the book is supported and that we're helping our patrons um, make sure that they're feeling comfortable with handling the item while they're viewing it. And the second is actually managing our vaults and our climate. So um, we take care to make sure that our humidity and temperature is within a specific range because there are um, materials within the physical item that are very sensitive um, to any kind of uh, large fluctuations or large influxes in um, temperature and humidity. So for example, um, vellum can actually um, shrink if it gets uh, too hot or too humid, it can uh, warp. And so we have to be extremely mindful about how we store these items. You'll also notice that the staff won't be wearing any gloves um, and, and you won't be required to wear any either. And um, there's a bit of a misconception about um, when cotton gloves are necessary or required. Uh, one of the reasons why we don't wear them here is because we do lose quite a bit of our tactile sensibility. And so um, our policy is clean, dry hands are the safest way to turn the pages um, and view the object. Fabrica represents a major advance in the history of anatomy. It revolutionized the study of the human body, and more than 700 copies survive from the 1543 and 1555 editions. There are always new discoveries, including one of the first edition here at Queen's a few years ago. There are no surviving records, but it is believed that between 800 and 1,000 of each edition would have been printed as was common for medical texts of that period. The Fabrica brought Vesalius fame, and as a result, he was appointed physician to the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V.